All right, what's happening, guys? Listen, Sportsman's Guide and us, we're like homies. And if you check out their website, we now have our own store within their store. So if you check out their website, sportsmansguide.com, go up to the products tab, you'll see a Warrior Poet Society store call out. It's a cool button. It's fun to push. And so, boom, it takes us to our page. Cool guy pictures and stuff. There is our amazing war poet pistol which is sold out but they've got back order and it's they're actually moving through warrior poet apparel and then check out this all the optics shooting accessories camping survival guns ammunition all the stuff that i like use and recommend it's right there so it's specially curated so you can get right to the good stuff if you couple that and use code war poet it'll save you some money at checkout so anyway check it out sportsmansguide.com code war poet time for a video here we go All right, welcome back, guys. We are answering the all-important question of what makes a good teacher or even a great teacher or instructor. And it's a critical, important question because if anyone's ever had a really inspirational, motivating, and life-changing teacher or instructor, they left an indelible mark on you that you're still carrying, right? A good teacher can literally take years off the learning process with just unlocking this special knowledge to you so that you can see different or think different about something. They can literally make the difference between winning or losing. You got a really good team, but a crap coach, guess what? You're going to lose. You got a not so good team, but an amazing coach, guess what? You have a pretty good shot. So anyway, anybody that's ever been blessed to have an amazing teacher or coach in your life, an amazing communicator, someone who could speak into your soul and move you to a higher place than you could get on your own. Super, super important. So what I wanted to do was go over the kind of what goes in to a really good teacher. Every time I start thinking about the nature of a good teacher or communicator, I think about this guy and it was back when I was in college, he was a calculus professor and he was recruited by my university because he was just doing amazing stuff in the world of mathematics. He was respected by his peers, brilliant, just brilliant guy. He could do the stuff. Amazing. The problem was, is he had a extremely heavy German accent, even more than our German scientists we have here on staff at Warrior Poet HQ. Really thick German accent. And it was very apparent in the first day of his class, which was my only day in his class, I immediately dropped the guy. Uh, he he was really good at doing the stuff, but he couldn't really communicate it and pass it on to us. And so day one, we're all sitting in class. He comes in, I'm like, all right, this guy must be our professor. He just kind of gives us a look, like a, doesn't say anything, doesn't introduce himself. And he turns around and he starts writing on the board. Not his name, not a core syllabus. He starts doing math just immediately, straight into calculus, true story. And so, uh, Anyway, he writes on the board. We're all just kind of like, okay, flip open and copy of like, is there a page number that corresponds to this? He's immediately doing calculus. And we don't know calculus, by the way. So uh, anyway, he turns around after about four or five minutes and he just kind of looks at us and he says, NZ questions? NZ questions? <laughs> we all had questions. <laughs> what is calculus? And so uh, I remember we went on break. It was a long period. We went on break and I went straight to the um, registrar's office and dropped his course. It was the worst teacher I've ever had. Brilliant mathematician, terrible teacher. And I contrast that with my high school wrestling coach, Coach Allen. And Coach Allen was completely different. Maybe in the field of wrestling, it's not that he knew all the stuff. It's that Coach Allen had this magnetic and magnetic personality. There was a force about him, something we'll call it gravitas, and it attracted us to him and all of us young wrestlers, though he wasn't a really loud coach and he wasn't just filling our ears with tons of words and packing every moment full with the neatest, most articulate instruction and coolest moves. It was, there was something about him that just made us want to break our backs to please the guy. You know, he had a kind of a quiet demeanor. He was extremely strong, sincere. He took care of us, but there was also a real vicious side. So he'd get down on the mat and show us something. And some of the most pain I've experienced in practice is when he asked to demonstrate something on me and he would just ratch me, you know, and fold me up like a pretzel. And anyway, uh, but I remember <laughs> I can still hear him in my ears and right before I'm about to go 
wrestle this guy and I'm, I'm you know thinking chess and trying to figure out how to uh, war game this and stuff and, and he played that part he was a thoughtful kind of tactician as well uh, and he instilled that in us and inspired us in that thoughtfulness but anyway he came up to me and I'm expecting kind of like a game plan but instead he got right up in my ear and he's like all right John just go out and attack him and there was no follow-up I'm like all right more strategy but that was it that was coach Al just go attack him attack him and I did that. I just went out and I went full aggression on the dude. Raw. Uh, anyway, that was Coach Allen. And I now, as I think and reflect on some of the most inspirational, life-changing coaches, I don't remember a lot of teachers' names in high school, but I remember Coach Allen. I remember vividly Coach Allen, right? And so I, I think in terms of being a great teacher or a coach or an instructor, there's a few things, three things I'll identify. Uh, one is who they are. The second is what they're communicating. And the third is how they communicate. The first one that really separates the good from the absolute great, it's more about who they are. Uh, the, what I rank really high on the who they are, I've, I want just a certain humility. And you notice uh, the folks that don't have that ingrained humility, they never know more than about a tenth of what they let on that they know because generally, they don't have the humility to admit that they don't know everything and reach out and think, think differently about stuff and get different perspectives. It's a huge hampering of the learning process when you don't have that humility. And it also makes you just detestable to be around. People can't stand it and they can sense it on you of like, ah, ego, you suck. I'll find someone else. Anyway, strength is another piece, especially just as a man, I'm attracted to that as well. If I, I, I want to see that quiet strength. Uh, character, you know, no one wants to follow a villain and character inspires people. It, it, it garners respect as well. And so a force of character to follow a good person on a noble mission, that's a big deal. And then that uh, another thing is gravitas. There's other attributes, but these are some of kind of the more the incommunicable attributes that are so important, that gravitas that just attracts you to be around somebody and they have just a certain force about them. It's not because they're loud or obnoxious or boisterous or demanding or demeaning. It's that there is something about their persona that uh, changes the chemistry even in a room. It's like, that's the guy that I'll break my back for and I don't even understand why. All of our most famous war generals would, it would carry a certain gravitas. Uh, of All of our key leaders of any real organizations, there was one of those things where people are humbled uh, to be around them. So it really goes into who they are and that that's really, that's not something you can fake. That's something that's developed through strife and difficulty, struggle, uh, experience, uh, character, spiritual growth, and you know, anyway, who they are. The second thing is what they're communicating. And this goes into a knowledge base. You can, you should, especially as we get older, be able to separate the wheat from the chaff pretty quickly and tell whether someone's full of crap or not. They should have a mastery of what they're trying to communicate. They should really know this stuff. They should be able to argue for or against whatever they're putting out, right? Uh, you can usually tell when somebody has mastery over a knowledge base when they're quick to ask follow-up questions like, well, what are you trying to accomplish? Well, what's your context? And, and trying to build something out. If they're usually emphatically putting it down, of like this is my way or the highway and everyone else is idiots, that's usually an insecurity and it means they don't really have a lot of breadth. Though sometimes, not all answers are good answers, by the way, we're not following into the postmodern rut. Not all ideas are good ideas. And so, and not all questions are good questions. So, uh, so like my middle school teachers will freak out. I'm like, yeah, that's post-millennial garbage. It's, it's trash. Not all questions are good. Uh, the third thing in, re in your review, who they are, what they're communicating. And the third thing is how they communicate. And I think people generally put the most em emphasis on this. This has to do with eloquence, speaking with your hands, drawing mental pictures or using visual aids, especially now in the days of really short attention spans, especially among millennials and generation uh, Z folks uh, coming up are we're so inundated with all this just different media around us it's 
incredibly difficult to keep Boobble's attention. And so you almost got to dance a jig just to keep everyone's attention, clap and run around and do interpretive dances while making jokes and telling stories. Uh, so it's really hard to corral people in. And so especially nowadays, you, how you communicate so that people will want to listen to you. That's really difficult, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or it's commanding a group, how you communicate can be extremely difficult. Uh, demonstration as well would fall under this category of how you communicate. So for instance, in the world of instructors, demonstration should be important, especially if I don't have any ailments. If, if you're like a 75 year old coach, coaching Olympics, no one expects you to get up and do an iron cross on the rings with a double back tuck and stick it, you know, like demonstration is important, but like, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to pick up a gun and demonstrate exactly what I'm saying. And so typically my general uh, idea is I, I want to teach, I want to learn under somebody who will actually demonstrate the skills. Why can't you demonstrate it? Show me. Uh, some folks will overdo the demonstration like my old calculus teacher did. He just, he did the demonstration. He was smart, he could do it, but he couldn't really bring me along. And so he was a really crappy teacher and instructor, right? You don't have to be the world best practitioner to be the world's best coach or teacher. You just have to have full command of subject matter. You can do it. You've been there. You've done that. So in as people start looking in different contexts, different pieces become more and more important. So for instance, if you're in like a church leadership role, who you are is going to be even more important, you better have that good integrity move. If you are communicating, not just shooting, but gunfighting, and you have no experience in tactical teams or law enforcement, and you've never even been in a fight, you don't really have a worthy opinion on how to how to fight. That's part of the prerequisites is I need you to have some experience. So all of this is pretty fresh on my mind because right now I'm on the prowl for good instructors that we can hire and bring into the Warrior Poet Society training. We do uh, teach gunfighting around the country of tactics, uh, pistol, rifle, all that stuff. And I want to get into medical and long range and shotgun stuff and bring those guys on. I wouldn't teach those latter topics, but then low light night vision all the things and bring them under our banner and really have a very, very uh, picky vetting process. So I'm on the prowl for those really good instructors. And I've enumerated five different things that I absolutely demand for anybody that wanted to apply with us. By the way, if you want to give it a go, then I want you to visit our training page. The link is going to be down below. Follow that. Don't just send me a resume because there'll be special stipulations. And if I just get hammered off of like, I once saw a video on shooting, I think I'm qualified. Hire me, John. I'm like, no. <laughs> Nonsense. Absolutely not. Uh, what I'm looking for in a fantastic, a great instructor is about five things. First is I want them to be a master communicator, right? It doesn't matter that you're the most amazing shooter if you can't bring other people along. I, I liken it to everyone's mind is like a combination lock and a good instructor can figure out exactly what the piece is so that we can click it in place and in as few words as possible unlock understanding for them so i want to in a sentence make you a better shooter than you've ever been before so i want a master communicator that has full command of all the different uh, eloquence, visual aids, coaching mechanisms, all that stuff master communicator second is i want a real world elite kind of top shelf background. So this means I want I want special operations veterans or I want dudes who have been running a SWAT team for federal law enforcement or LE for a long time. I want folks that are top level. So you've done a field surgery kind of stuff if you're teaching uh, medicine or if it's more of just a skills class, it's just shooting, then we'll give me a grandmaster competitive shooter. But e either way, it's a top, top shelf uh, background so that you have absolute credibility. Master communicator, elite real world background. Third is an efficient coach, whether they're teaching a whole group or they can come up on the line, see immediately what the problem is and fix them faster than anyone else around. So uh, efficient coach. Four is they can demonstrate skills at the highest level. Again, our instructors are going to shoot live in front of the students. I perform live in front of the students. Uh, and that gains instant credibility or you lose all credibility right then and there, but you should be able to demonstrate the stuff works, right? You don't have to be the best in the world, but you're pretty darn good and everyone knows it. So I uh, want that as well. Uh, the fifth thing is something I spoke to earlier. It's that gravitas and it rallies them around our warrior poet ethos, our specific culture that recognizes we're balancing life, guys. That's what warrior poet society and warrior poets 
are. We're lovers of truth, lovers of people, defenders of both. We live for higher purpose. We are lions and we're lambs. We're lovers and we're fighters. We care about people, ready to sacrifice in the defense of others. And so well-rounded individuals, uh, pretty family-friendly generally until it's ready to throw the aggression switch and stack bodies of terrorists and things like that, then we'll do so. Anyway, guys, if you're interested in applying or something uh, we'll have information down below in this video so that you can do this. Guys uh, who were just along for the good instructor and teacher rant, I want to hear down below in the comments uh, some stories of the worst teachers you've ever had uh, or some of those who just really moved you and what made them so good. So anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts, guys. Make sure you're checking out the comments. Really fun stuff down there. Make sure you like, subscribe, subscribe toggle the notifications bell so you're getting all notifications or you're not going to find out when we post future videos. I want to thank channel sponsor uh, for uh, hooking us up. Uh, guys, uh, thanks for stopping in. Train hard, train smart. See you next time.